Want to check out the new digs of the Pope? Yeah, so would I. But we'll just have to settle for the wine. Check it out next on Leet Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm... Everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. All right, so let's do something really cool. Let's uh, let's get into um, let's get into another French wine here, and I'm excited to do this one. I bought a couple of bottles of this one uh, because it was very very highly uh, touted. Uh, if I remember correctly, this vintage is also another really good vintage for the area. So this is the 2015 Domaine Bois de Boisson Chateauneuf de Pop. Uh, got it off of Somme Select. Uh, about 51 bucks for the bottle. <clears throat> and um, let's see here. Yeah, it's, 2015 is a classic, exceptional vintage. And by ex exceptional, I mean, if you're going to follow uh, ratings, this is in that 97, 98, you know, point uh, rating for a vintage. So this is, this is gonna be like a big boy right here. So the winemaker, for uh, this wine is Jean-Paul Avassino. Uh, he, um, yeah, he's the winemaker. And it was founded in 1955 by Jean uh, Vassino uh, and is operated by his son, Jean-Paul. So Ian Cobble, who is, you know, the guy who runs Psalm Select and, you know, writes most of the tasting notes on Psalm Select, he kind of equates this uh, chateau with, um, or Domain, sorry, not a Chateau, with this Chateau of the Pop to Chateau Rea. And Chateau Rea is like really up there in the Chateau Neuf, uh realm. So um, all the vineyards for this wine are, or for the Domain are located inside the uh, village of Chateau Neuf de Pop. They have about 10 hectares. Uh, and they only bottle three wines. So they didn't, didn't mean they only make you know, there are three wines that they make from that. The vine ages anywhere from 55 to 95 years. They're all farmed or organically. They use all 13 or 17, depending on how you're counting the varieties. So here they are. Grenache, that'd be Blanc, Noir, and uh, Gris, Syrah, Mavet, Cinso, Coulois, uh, Boubou Blanc, uh, Roussan. Let me try that again. Boubou Blanc, uh, Roussan, uh, Brangente, uh, Vacarés, uh, Clarit, uh, Clarit Rosé, uh, Picardon, uh, Picpou, uh, and that's the Noir, Gris, and uh, Blanc uh, version, and Terre Noir. How did I do it? I did it okay on that? I've been working on that. Um, so because they're using all of it, it actually means they, by law, have to, uh, the red and white musts need to be blended prior to vinification. So you can't like vinify them all separately and then blend them together. Uh, they use 85% whole cluster fermentation. They have about three weeks of maceration for that, you know, extraction. And they do 24 months in neutral foodress. So the really big barrels uh, that are older. So they're really just vessels to age for the oxidative quality, not really to impart any uh, oak to the wine. So I'm excited. I don't drink a lot of Chateau Neuf. Um, I did try some other Chateau Neuf recently and it was super delicious, but I'm excited to try this because like I bought this one. The other was like, I just tried. Actually, the one I did try, I do have a bottle of that here too. So, and I think I brought some Chateau Neuf to the tasting group a couple weeks ago. Well, a couple weeks ago this time. Man. It, no, it's not. I was going to say it was bad. No, it's not. Man, it smells pretty good. And I'm only like, I'm only like hanging out up here in the in the the little ether where the higher esters. I don't know if that's what they're called, but the the esters are just kind of like dancing over the glass. 
Um, I smell lots of spice, but also smell like a little bit of funk to it. Um, I mean, it's, it's only a 15, but it looks like there's a little bit of browning to it. Um, but that's really more from the grapes rather than necessarily uh, age. So yeah, so you got a little bit of funk to it, a little bit of manure, a little bit of spice, um, a little bit of like tartar red fruit, touch of licorice, touch of black pepper. Yeah, a little meatiness to it. Little potpourri, dried fruit, not dried fruit, dried flowers, cedar box. It's it's more spice driven than fruit driven for sure. More non fruit driven, earthiness, that type of stuff. You know, mushroom, that type of thing. I cannot wait to try this thing. So there's like an explosion of spice that just happened. It's like I opened up the spice rack or your, your cabinet has all your spices and it all just like poof, hit it once. So, oh my God, how, what do I, where do I start? Like oregano, thyme, uh, not only cinnamon, but um, um, like rosemary, um, like a touch of like of like cinnamon, a touch of cardamom, um, a touch of mint. Um, even like, I almost feel like garlic powder, onion powder, that type of stuff, you know. Combine that with like a little stinky earth. Yeah, a little stinky earth, um, a bitterness to it. There's like cedar box, uh, instead of potpourri, they're more like decaying flowers. And I haven't even talked about fruit yet. It's like dried cranberry, dried raspberry, um, that type of stuff, like a dried red fruit more than anything else. There's a touch of cinnamon here. They already talked about cinnamon, but like a touch of cinnamon. Yeah, I mean, and it feels like there's a little bit of heat to this. And Chateauneuf usually is that higher alcohol, usually in that 14 plus percent range. But if there's a high alcohol to this, it doesn't, it, it, it's like, you wouldn't, I mean, it's integrated really well. So let's see, 14%. I did not look at the alcohol ahead of time. Um, there's there's like this like this smokiness to it, like that you just put the fire out. That's coming along like now more than anything else during this whole tasting. And, and the color is you know something like this. The color would make me think it might be an older Bordeaux, but. At the same time, I mean, of course, I know the answer to the test is like it's only four years old. Technically, it's not really quite five, even though it's 2020. Because you have to realize they, they harvest at the end of the year. And then, you know, this is around the time that the wine is being finished off as far as like, you know, fermentation is finished. And they're throwing it into the into the barrels. They've only been in the barrel for like maybe a couple months at this point. So this wine still is really only like a four years old. Um... But knowing that, I mean, I see why this is Chateauneuf and not like Bordeaux and why it's not Beaujolais because on the nose, just like up here, it's like, oh, it's Beaujolais. And that's where Beaujolais can really confuse you because it can be like Syrah or Northern or even just Southern Rhone-like, but then it can also exhibit certain like Pinot Noir qualities. So 
That's why Beaujolais, there's, has, there's just like that extra bit of quality that makes a Beaujolais versus anything else. Mm. There's a bit of leather to it, a little bit of, of um, dustiness to it. Man, I got one more wine to do after this. And the tannin is starting to really come through now. Where I didn't really notice the tannin for, at first, I'm starting to notice. This wine is freaking outstanding. Like, you see this producer? I see why Cobble is like in love with this producer because he really talks really well about this about this winery. Um, yeah, you need to buy this wine. It's not cheap, but at the same time, for 51 bucks, you could put this up against some other Chateau Neuf that's like, 20, 30 bucks more, maybe even 50 bucks more a bottle. It's gonna, it's gonna hold up really well against those bottles. So yeah, you should get this wine. All right, that's gonna do it for this episode. Click all the links, frame me up in the website or hit the links below in the description. Hit the PayPal link, or hit the PayPal button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Do all the things you need to do and uh, we'll see everyone again next time.